Hey guys, welcome to our podcast, Deeper Into the Dark, where two friends descend into true crime, the paranormal, and all things strange, like us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> get it, get it. <laughs> you messed me up. I was like, I was going to go somewhere, then <laughs> I forgot. Anyways. I love doing that. <laughs> Keep you on your toes. So, it's a Mother's Day. Coming up future episode <laughs> for mother's day so we okay so this will air right before mother's day so we wanted to celebrate mother's day we will be recording on mother's day <laughs> 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 but we wanted to go ahead and talk about mother's day before mother's day yeah sorry that was me why were you doing that while i'm talking <laughs> i'm gonna smack you with my titties <laughs> Because I know you won't like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so bad. Just like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I don't even need my hands. Smack you in my city. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure you act right. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so dramatic. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This or is... should I get real traumatic and sit on you with my vagina? <laughs> oh. She is... And I'm on my period. It's going to be fun. Oh for no. <laughs> Clot on the face. <laughs> Bitch, I'm not trying to split this red sea. You better stop. <laughs> uh. <laughs> See, it's going to be a waterfall. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Anyways, guys, it is Mother's Day episode. Woo-hoo. To all your favorite mothers. And all you who do not have a mother, we will be your mom. You're welcome. I have titties that you can rest upon. I bought some. They're in the closet. <laughs> well, this is episode 18. Episode 18. We 18. are of age, guys. We're able to smoke... We still can't buy alcohol. And the only thing we can't do is have girlfriends under the age of 18. (laughs) Yeah, even though technically (laughs) we're still minors. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Anyways. That's so creepy. I know. (laughs) So, like, if, like, okay, here's a question I got to propose to you. Are you going to propose to me? (laughs) Do you, oh, God. Do you (laughs) think if a guy is 17, he's dating a girl, let's say, 16, 15, or even the same age as 17, but her birthday is two months away. He turns 18. Should he continue dating her until she turns 18? They can date, but they can't have sex. They shouldn't be having sex at that age anyways, but I know they would be doing it. But It's so weird. I just, I don't know. I just... Bleh. I, bleh. I mean, if they're in high school together... I... Yeah. But um, it'll be different if it was, let's say, like a 19-year-old that's in college dating a 16-year-old high school student. Oh, that's already past a whole nother line. Yeah. There's like a gray, obviously, which is what I just brought up. I can understand as long as they're not doing the nasty. Like, let's just wait a little bit which, until she becomes Let's age. not even pretend it because there's people that are like 13, 14 pregnant. We knew people when we were in high school doing that shit. Mm-hmm. I knew this girl, not going to call her her name, she wasn't even 18 yet, and she was dating a 24-year-old. Mm-hmm. I'm like... And they thought they were the shit, and I was like, ew. Yeah. That's disgusting. Like, girl, Babe, you what's need wrong? to stop. You okay? <laughs> Sweetie, who hurt who you? Hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> what daddy have... issues do you have? <laughs> <laughs> There's some trauma there, isn't there? <laughs> With me, it was opposite. It was like, I'll date you, but we ain't fucking. <laughs> exactly. That's a bit much. Oh. Unless you're a girl, we ain't fucking. <laughs> I ain't getting pregnant. <laughs> they even have a fucking daycare on our high our middle school. They did. That was so awkward. And then every morning you'd hear that one girl, sorry, I had to drop my kid off at daycare over there. And they're like, oh, no, we understand me and you. Or like all the other kids were like, what? Not, like, <coughs> not that it was so foreign or new, 15. but it's just like, dude, seriously, like, you yeah. couldn't keep your legs closed? <laughs> they got busy on the summer break. 
<laughs> you had a really good summer break. You broke something in. You know what we did? <laughs> we ate junk food, stayed up past the unholy hours of mm-hmm. three, four o'clock till we finally fell asleep. Mm-hmm. Not that in front of the TV. <laughs> yeah. Not that we weren't being dirty, but like, come on, we knew what condoms were. Well, I well, did. Yeah. I did not have sex with guys and I did. I know. <laughs> we know. I just like heavily made out and grinded over jean yeah. stuff, over pants. But any boyfriend I have and they were like, Can we go all the way? I'm like No. I literally what would pop in my head is a child, I'd be barefoot and pregnant. Serving my man, a baby wrapped around your ankle. Yeah, come with a third one, and I'd be like, "Y'all get inside this kitchen right now and eat your supper." I ain't gonna tell you again. I was just like, every time they would say that, I'd be like, "Fuck no, <laughs> no, please no, <laughs> no." <laughs> just being that. I'd be like, "We can do anything but that." <laughs> just your stereotypical mother, or a stereotypical like country living in the country. Yeah. Y'all get in here, eat y'all dinner before it gets cold. No, hey, you. try. My Tiffany. grandma used to have one. <laughs> Tiffany, go get me a pack of cigarettes before you come and get your dinner. <laughs> I'm stressing with all you damn kids. And I want my damn change back. <laughs> <laughs> I know how much shit costs. And I'm going to get my 12 cents back. You ain't getting no, nothing. And I know how many cigarettes come in a pack. Won't you be stealing none? You hear me, Bertha? <laughs> 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 Anyways. Yeah, I didn't have But sex. speaking of mother. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of mothers, this is our Mother's Day episode. How it all started. So let me say mine and then Steph and I had him look up some funny facts. <laughs> <laughs> Just jokes in general. <laughs> all right, so this is it's going to be real quick because, I mean, it was a whole damn article on history.com, but I was just like, I ain't having that. <laughs> so I cut it down really quick. All right, so Mother's Day holiday transpired in 1900s as a result from efforts of Anna Jarvis following her mother Anna Reeves Jarvis death in 1905. Anna conceived of Mother's Day as a way of honoring the sacrifice mothers made for their children. She gained financial support from a Philadelphia department store owner and in May 1908 Anna organized the official first Mother's Day. With great success, she pushed for it to be added to a national calendar, and by 1914, President Woodrow Wilson signed a measure officially establishing the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. Anna saw the celebration as a day celebrated between mothers and families. Her version of the day involved wearing a white carnation as a badge and visiting one's mother or attending church services. Unfortunately, when it became national, it became commercialized, and by 1920, Anna had become disgusted with how the holiday had transformed and denounced the transformation and urged people to stop buying Mother's Day flowers, candies, and cards. She began an open campaign against Mother's Day profiters. By the end of her death in 1948, um, Anna disowned the holiday altogether and even actively lobbied the government to see it removed from the American calendar. So you know it's fucked up when someone pushes for something and then at the end they're like, nah, I don't want that. <laughs> Y'all commercialize that shit out of that. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. I didn't, I read that it started in the 1900s, but I didn't know that it was like, nah, we're good. We don't want that no more. Yeah. Which I get it. She had like this vision for it and it was, damn you. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Jinx. Poke. Pinch poke you on me. Twist your nipples. <laughs> Nip naps. Nip nap. Paddy whack. Nipple slap. Triple trap. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah. I, she had a certain vision for it. And when it wasn't. Honored as she wanted. She was like, nah, son. Get rid of that. So how did she originally want it? She wanted everybody to wear. Like a white carnation, like a badge, like a little, little thing that kind of like know. how they do for Veterans Day. Yeah, and then just just go visit your mom, or go to a church service, you know, like low key. Rather than a whole hoopla, and not commercialized thing. Yeah, not candies, flowers, and 
cards like oh let me give you a gift blah, blah, blah. no that's not what the point of it was which I totally understand because I think if I had a mom I would be gifting her every day not just one day out of the year mm-hmm. or at least if I can't do it physically I'm going to do it with my time mm-hmm. and not just designate one day out of the year that I go and make a day all about my mom true because at that point it'll just be her birthday I mean, yeah, instead of Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so she saw it more as, like, a family coming together and celebrating what their mother has done for their family, what their sacrifices, mentally, physically, financially. You know, it goes, a lot goes into um, birthing a child and all that. And just raising a family on your yeah. own. Because well, let's be fair works, and yeah. honest, back in the 1900s, the men weren't necessarily there. No, they were working or fucking. Or off purpose. fighting wars. Yeah. Getting sacrificed. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. That's fun fact. Interesting. Well, not fun fact, sorry. History. Dark fact. <laughs> History Dark fact. of the making of Mother's Day. Cheers. Cheers, people. Cheers. Happy Mother's Day. Cheers, darlings. Founder did not enjoy the what it became. Oh man. Okay, you want some jokes? Yes. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay, this is stupid. I love it already. What did the baby corn say to the mama corn? Hmm. Where's popcorn? <laughs> so fucking stupid. Oh, I got these jokes from jokesforus.com. <laughs> <That's so laughs> stupid. Okay. Why is a computer so smart? Because hmm. it listens to its motherboard. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking stupid. Whoever um, came up with these are lame. <laughs> and I love you. <laughs> and I love you at the same time. What Can we get ca- this in a card? <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a mom who can't draw? A mom that can't draw. Mm. Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> that it works. <laughs> what do you call a small mom? Mini mom. Is that what it's called? It's minimum. <laughs> minimum. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Why don't mothers wear watches? This is kind of fucked up. Because <laughs> they have many faces? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> there's a clock on the stove. Oh my god, that's so fucked up. Because <laughs> that's where a mom Bel- that's belongs where the in the kitchen. Belong. <laughs> that's <laughs> slaving up. over a hot stove. Oh god. Oh lord. What, what did the baby Egyptian say when he got lost? Mummy. <laughs> I want my mummy. I want my mummy. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Oh wow. This is so 1900s. What book do moms like the most? What books do mom moms like? The Bible. Their husband's checkbook. Oh God, go die, go fuck yourself. Exactly. Fuck off. Some guy wrote that shit. Mm-hmm. Who was it? I have a feeling. <laughs> Who did this? <laughs> I have a feeling his name is Todd. <laughs> his name is fucking Todd. No, it's probably like Dan. <laughs> David. Or some John. Dude, stupid. Something like non original. <laughs> oh, God. You want to hear a, a movie quote? Sure. <laughs> I'm not one of those regular moms. I'm a cool mom. What's that from? Oh, wait, say that again? <laughs> oh, my God. Isn't that from fucking Mean Girl? <laughs> yeah. I'm a cool mom. <laughs> <laughs> the dog chewing on her nipple. I'm one of those cool, cool moms. moms. <laughs> It's how I know you don't pay attention to the things I say. You're like, wait, what did you say? <laughs> Are you doing anything for um, Mother's Day for your mom? I asked her if she wanted anything. Not that, like, I should ask her. I should just get her something. But I was like, do you want anything special or anything like that? Because here's the thing. She doesn't want any more purses, bags, or, like, jewelry or anything special. She's like, I got too much of that shit in my closet. She's like, I'm done. I'm like, do you want a book? Because I know you like to read. And she's like, you give me books all the time. And I was like, true. And then she's like, just take me out to dinner or something. Or take me to eat. She's like, and your love. And I was like, well, <laughs> I'll be. We're doing, uh, for my grandma, 
Um, my sister and I already went together and got her an ice machine because I was really tired of her using the ice trays. And when I went one day and she was like, I need ice. I was like, here, let me get it for you. Wow, was my phone. Oh, wow, Stefan. Steph, that was your turn. All right, so you would always give me shit about my phone. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so me and my sister got together. We were Costco shopping, and um, I, we were talking about um, the ice tray shit because I went one day, and I was trying to break her ice from her ice tray. Oh, and that shit was fucking difficult, and I was getting frustrated, and I was like, I don't know how you do it with your hands because this is terrible. Maybe it wasn't your phone. We were trying, I was trying to get the ice out, and I was like, I don't know how you do this. So I got an ice maker um, with my sister, and my grandma loves it, right? And as soon as I was installing it and stuff, my grandpa was giving me shit, and my grandma tells me the other day, she goes, oh, yeah, no, he said keep it on. He loves it. Don't you dare turn it off. And he just like, oh, yeah, the ice will make itself, and it'll just sit there until I'm ready, and if not, it'll melt and just keep going. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> just take it out and refill your bucket. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> she but yeah, he was, while I was setting it up, he was bitching at me the entire time about how stupid it was. It was a terrible purchase. We didn't need that shit. And my grandma's like, oh yeah, he's in love with it. If I touch it, he gets mad. And I'm like, it's your fucking gift. <laughs> Not his. <laughs> And I was like, you tell him that next time. She goes, I will. <laughs> wow. Men. I know. Okay, I have one more. Okay. So a family was having dinner on Mother's Day. For some reason, the mother was unusually quiet. Finally, the husband asked what was wrong. Nothing, said the woman. Not buying it, he said again. Seriously, what's wrong? Do you really want to know? Well, I'll tell you. I have cooked and cleaned and fed the kids for 15 years, and on Mother's Day, you don't even tell me so much as thank you. Why should I, he said. Not once in 15, 15 years have I gotten a Father's Day gift. Yes, she said, but I'm their real mother. Oh, shit, that's so fucked up. <laughs> so he ain't the father. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucked up. Oh, man. Step daddy here. Hey, step daddy. It's step dad. Oh my god. Or either that or he's shooting blanks. We tried. It didn't work. So I went with your brother. <laughs> oh my god. I almost spit out on my computer. <laughs> um, I don't twins, know. It's close. Yeah, it's close enough. Why not? Genetics, you know, it'll work out. <laughs> the, it's similar enough. The grandma of the kids is like, Hey, why do these kids look like Mark and not Todd? <laughs> you and Todd. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a stupid white man name. Oh. And it was in that stupid thing you showed me earlier. <laughs> yeah, it was his name, Todd. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> the coincidence. <laughs> I will, Yachty. Sorry. I had pizza and now the grease is starting to affect me. That's why. I'm... Okay, me and you ate the same amount of pizza slices. <laughs> But you had like tons of pepper. <laughs> I did. I got we okay. We got three different pizzas because why not? And Cheese pizza, us, pepperoni yeah. pizza, and then I got one with like a shit ton of pe pepperonis on it. And I ate three slices of that and a cheese pizza. <laughs> God damn. Oh God. I'm like having a whole conniption. <laughs> Just <laughs> convulsing it. <laughs> Don't stroke out on me. <laughs> okay. So, um, happy Mother's Day, and um, we're going to start. I guess and I'll go first. because moms deserve it. <laughs> yeah, fathers, get off your ass and go and deal with your woman. Give her the good good, because you haven't been doing it good enough. Okay, I'm going to go first this week, since you went first last week. Okay. I guess. I'm just kidding. bippity boppity boo A bippity boppity boo I love you. Okay. So on this week's episode, I let you too. Thank you. <laughs> in honor of Mother's Day, I was looking for a figure in the paranormal realm. I love this. I'm like leaning back like a lazy bitch. I know, right? We're I'm recording off of Do you think this headsets. will reach to the couch? couch? <laughs> just you lay down. So on this episode, <laughs> just not clocked So up. on this, for my, my, <laughs> my story today. <laughs> <laughs> so on this week's episode, in honor of Mother's Day, I was looking for a figure in the paranormal realm and just couldn't seem to escape an infamous legend. A legend told across South America and southern parts of North America. 
specifically closer to the Rio Grande River. Mm-hmm. So the infamous entity is widely known as La Llorona, or translated to the Weeping Woman. Insert crying here. <laughs> Just like that. No, hold on. Let's get the <laughs> echo effect. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> You're ruining my effects. Okay. Okay, we'll do it again. Okay. Oh, no. Do you guys hear that? You're you're done. (laughs) You're done. You're done. Okay, so now there are many reiterations of this tale considering the story changes from household to household and person to person, obviously. It's like telephone. But I wanted to focus on what I found through articles consistently. But I got my, this story, I had to find it down because from what I've heard, it's very vague. I just know an idea of what it was. Because I was never told, have you heard the story of La Llorona? Um, I was always told just my family's tales. I was never told. I, I knew of La Llorona, but I was never told the tale, like, as a spooky story. Real quick, do you want to hear how I heard the story? Sure. Just, like, real quick. Yeah. You would never guess. <clears throat> church camp. <laughs> One of the people I went to church with, we went to this retreat, and um, they were telling me the story, and that was the first time I heard it. Really? Was it during church camp? The first time I stumbled, uh, stumbled, 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 the first time I ever stumbled across La Llorona was I was reading this book of um, scary tales or something like those weird creepy tales. It was just, I forgot what it was, but um, basically um, it was talking about like this one tale and then it brought up other tales from Mexican history or um, Hispanic history like famous like they brought up La Llorona, uh, El Chupacabra, the El Cucuy and um they brought up those things and I'm like La Llorona and it had this like drawing of like these monsters surrounding like this kid in his bed and whatnot and I saw this woman figure and I was like that has to be La Llorona and then I was like looked it up and that's how I found about La Llorona because I was never because it about... even sounds feminine so mm-hmm. you think you are uh, uh... Like, without them even telling me, they just told me the ta- like the name. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, that sounds like a woman. Mm-hmm. So you mean the gravitator is sort of like a feminine yeah. type, the entity. So, yeah. But now I know La is for girls. <laughs> and Thanks to Espanol. Espanol. <laughs> in high school. I failed first semester of Spanish because I didn't pay attention. I was too busy doing my eyeliner. Girl, I went and did three years in high school Three years in college, and I know a lick of nothing. A nada. <laughs> <laughs> I absorbed absolutely nothing. I literally would piss off my college teacher because um, I would know the words for a lot of them, but I would just put O at the end. And so when I would come into the class, she'd be like, Buenos dias, Cristina. Como estas? And I'm like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Oh, and she just roll her eyes. She goes, <laughs> "Stop." <laughs> She's like, "No comprende, no speaking no English." <laughs> no, you gotta put "o" at the end, Miss. Don't you know Spanish? I You're the like, teacher. <laughs> Espanol? No, it's Spanish. Oh, get it together. <laughs> and she really, she's like, "Christina, I'm gonna see you after class." And I'm like, "Yes, ma'am." <laughs> Oh my gosh. But, uh, you know, some people just have to brighten your day, and I thought I was doing that. <laughs> you probably just really irritated the shit out of her. She's like, this girl does not take me seriously. <laughs> but doing? I took her for three years. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, oh, year three. Hey, Christina. I feel like she just gave me a C for participation. <laughs> hey, you probably gave me more attention than I did. She would call on me in class and be like, okay, repeat that for me. Ready? <laughs> and I'd be like, okay. <laughs> no mas te besuerte. And no mas sobres terre. <laughs> That's a hard oh. sound. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She'd okay. be like, are you trying? And I'm like, yes, so. <laughs> she goes, you yes, know so. how to say C. And I'm like, C-O. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'd be like, can you just take this serious? And I'm like, C. <laughs> <laughs> Soon she'd turn around. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, Christina. No, I was legit saying, oh, like, I just figured this out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got this tale from uh, legendsofamerica.com. Um, I just needed one on paper to tell it. Mm-hmm. But um, if there are different reiterations that you may have heard, sorry if this isn't what you heard, but I just wanted people to know of La Llorona if you have not heard of her. So, La Llorona was named Maria when she was born to a peasant family in a humble village. Her startling beauty captured the attention of the area's rich and poor men. She was said to have spent her days in her humble peasant surroundings, but she would don her best white gown in the evenings and thrill the men who admire her and the local fandangos. Fandangos. Yeah. What does that mean, fandangos? Is that like circles of people or something? Or is that like crowds of people? Circle. I don't know. You want me to Google it real quick? Yeah. Fandangos? Yeah, fandangos. Fandango ate my baby. (laughs) (laughs) What is it? A dingo ate my baby? (laughs) A dango ate my baby. Are you going to cover that? What? The dingo ate my baby story thing? Oh, I don't know. That's a real thing, though. Let's see... Oh my god, are you going to cover the crime case of that one astronaut lady that went to go kill the mistress of her man or something like that? And she like shit in a diaper for like three days straight because she drove for three days straight. Oh, I do remember hearing about that. I only bring it up because two poor girls mentioned that and then I was like, oh my god, I remember that case. It was ridiculous. It means music. Fandango. Oh, so like kind of like, like going to fiesta. concerts or like something like that. Like, oh my god, I'm going to dance at the fiesta. <laughs> Oh, CCCCCC. Oh, yeah. So she was like every other girl that goes dresses up to go listen to music and dance. It's just hard because when you put it in, it just wants to pull up fandango.com. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I banned your ass. <laughs> I will not be downloading you. <laughs> okay. So one legend says that La Llorona was a caring woman full of life and love who married a wealthy man. A wealthy man that had lavished her with gifts and attention. However, after she bore him two sons, he had suddenly changed. He started returning to his life of womanizing and drinking alcohol and leaving her for months at a time with the kids. He seemingly no longer cared for the beautiful Maria, even talking about leaving her to marry a woman of his own wealthy class. When he did return home, it was only to visit his children. The devastated Maria began to feel resentment towards the boys. One evening, as Maria was strolling with her children on a shady pathway near the river, her husband came by in a carriage with an elegant lady beside him. He stopped and spoke to his children but ignored Maria, and then drove the carriage down the road without looking back. After seeing this, Maria went into a terrible rage. Turned to her children, she seized them and threw them into the river. As they disappeared downstream, she realized what she had done. She began running down the bank, the river bank, to save them. But it was too late. Maria broke down into an inconsolable grief, running down the streets, screaming and wailing. The beautiful La Llorona mourned them day and night. During this time, she would not eat and walked along the river in her white gown searching for her boys, hoping they would return to her. She cried endlessly as she roamed the riverbanks, and her ground became soiled and torn. When she refused to eat, she grew thinner and appeared taller, until she looked like a walking skeleton. Still a young woman, she finally died on the riverbanks. Not long after her death, her restless spirit began to appear, walking the banks of the river when darkness fell. Her weeping and wailing became a curse of the night, and people began to be afraid to go out after dark. She was said to have been seen drifting between the trees along the shoreline or floating on the current with her long white gown spread out upon the waters. On many dark nights, on many a dark night, people would see her walking along the riverbank and crying for her children. And so they no longer spoke of her as Maria, but as La Llorona, the weeping woman. Children are warned not to go out in the dark, for La Llorona might snatch them, throwing them to their deaths into the flowing waters. Though the legends vary, the apparition is said to act without hesitation or mercy. The tales of her cruelty depend on the version of the legend as you hear. Some say that she kills indiscriminately, taking men, women, and children, 
whoever is foolish enough to approach and get close enough to her. Others say she is very barbaric and only kills children, dragging them screaming to a watery grave. She has been seen along many rivers across the southwest, and the legend has become part of the Hispanic culture everywhere. Part of the legend is that those who do not treat their families well will see her, and she will teach them a deep, dark lesson. Like I said before, there are many different ways in which the story is told because it changes from household to household, but one thing remains the same. Be weary near waterways and the wells of La Llorona. Do so good. Oh my god. Okay, now I'm going to turn my phone back on because I act... Oh no, I can actually show you on my laptop. I actually have video of, of um, screaming. I mean, people crying. recording and I actually have sound of... You said this was La over Llorona. in Guadalupe? No. River? No. Where at? Oh, it's just waterways in general. Guadalupe. Did I mention Guadalupe? I thought you said it at the beginning. What did you say at the beginning? Mm. The riverbanks of Guadalupe. Did you not say that? I don't think so. Oh. Hmm. Banks of the river. Hmm. I don't know why Guadalupe got in my head then. Guadalupe. Guadalupe. But it was... Guadalupe. It's a Mexican... Um, tail, right? Mm hmm. Like from Mexico? Mm hmm. Okay. Did I mention what? I don't feel like I did. I don't did know, I? Maybe I just heard it. Yeah, nothing. Oh, okay. Weird. Oh, well. I heard Guadalupe for some reason. Hmm. I mean, I know there's a lot that happens on the Guadalupe River in general. Mm. Like, I've heard they found bodies there in general. But um, I, well, that's what I was gonna say. Is a lot of the crimes that I read about are Guadalupe River. Mm. So I was gonna say, I wonder. I never looked to see if there were children deaths, or it, I would just read and it'd be like another body found or whatever. But I never looked. Sorry, I never looked to see if it was kids. Mm. Cause right. then I was like, did you know my theory? I was like. What if a serial killer is using the guise of La Lorena? La, I can't even say it. You La Lorena. Okay, so here is some audio I found. Not audio. Or, so it's just showing a lady looking outside her window in the city. Can you hear the wailings of a woman? Oh, it sounds like a dog. Okay, not right there. Oh, that no. scared the shit out of me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Something's gonna pop up. <laughs> They're like, what the hell are you playing? I don't know. I feel like it kind of sounds like a dog. And there are so many videos on the internet of people saying that they have got video of La Llorona and her well, and they actually see like a woman walking across up by the riverbank and whatnot. Um, hmm. so my question is to you, is do you think La Llorona would technically be considered, like, you know how Japan has their version of, like, the woman in white, like a yokai, she's like a spirit tormented looking for revenge or something of the sort, would you say she sounded kind of like that, but of Mexican? Yeah, because she also went over after kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. only kind of kids, like a, Only kids could see her? Like Hachishaku-sama, the urban legend of her, how she's more white, and but her laugh is like poop, 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 poop. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I remember Stefan. Thank you for night <laughs> Um, did you actually get scared of that? I had no. I just had a really weird ass dream where I was a kid, and I was like barricading myself in my house. I was like that guy, the little kid, mm -hmm. and. It was like the whole thing, but it was me, and it was me as the little girl. But um, I think a lot of it was because um, when I was living with my father mm -hmm. at one point um, during a lot of neglect towards me, one of them was that he locked me in closets and bedrooms, and I'd be like in dark spaces, and I'd be hearing weird ass sounds. 
mm-hmm. and some it would be like <clears throat> voices or tapping like this on the window and shit so I think it like triggered that when you were telling me the story of oh, the tap 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 yeah. tap, tap, tap. So, yeah, so I had like a weird ass dream that ended up turning into a nightmare. It just triggered something. But I'm also sorry. it was hot in my trailer, so really the You're sweating was from that. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was like this whole thing and I was just like, god damn it, stuff it. <laughs> and then you kept saying poop 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 and I was like, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> But yeah, so I think, um, I don't know, in in my honest opinion, I feel like cultures take other stories and make it their own. I feel, I feel like there's always an underlying, um, similarity between them all. Yeah. Like, okay, like, I'm not saying like from what you just said but like in general i feel like it happens a lot people try and say like oh they're copying us and we were here before them and whatnot and it's like yeah well if you think about it white the color white usually represents what purity uh-huh. and so when you see it on something so demented dark and run down and creepy it makes it that much more sinister because like are you going to be scared of something that's in black chasing you like no you know it's going to be scary so like you just avoid it but something white it's kind of like inviting you towards it so it has a little bit more of an innocence feel to it but it's mm. not yeah exactly so it makes it that much it's more like cool. psych bitch mm-hmm. i'm gonna and, kill um, you and your family <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna drown you in the banks of a river i'm gonna drown your ears but yeah it's just so uh there are similarities between cultures and whatnot, but it's also, like, an underlying tale of, like, lessons and revenge and whatnot. But it also has to deal with what um, people tell other people through legends and myths and stuff like that just for, like, a similar lesson. But in another aspect, that had to have come from something. So. Well, and it goes back to stories are passed down from generations. That's how it was... Definitely back in the past, mm-hmm. you heard things from your family mm-hmm. members. Um, so this probably came about like that as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is very popular if I'm able to hear about it from a little white kid in <laughs> church camp. <laughs> so, oh, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, do you... Okay, I'm not discrediting anything that's like paranormal or whatever that's happening and whatever aside from your beliefs but do you think a few if not several of paranormal entities that are famous are a culmination or a um how do you say a manifestation manifestation of a kind of like how in supernatural the tulpa you know that tulpa creature where it's like a spirit that isn't real but if people focus enough on it they create it yeah do you think that is something that is a lot of things because these are popular figures and scary stories that they actually become real because enough people believe in it well not only that but the mind itself can form things Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who you are you know um if you're sick mentally shit we think we see stuff all the time Mm mm-hmm and I'm pretty normal for the most part, but I see shit. Sometimes I hear things and that I'll like respond and I'm like, oh wait, no one's there. Why, why the hell am I hearing someone call my name? And a lot of times I know it's because I've heard someone say it or I've seen it before and it's just popping up in my head. Mm-hmm. And just like I can hear music clearly in my head when it's not on. Mm-hmm. And then I'll start singing to it, you know? So I think a lot of it too is just, how our mind perceives things. Yeah. The mind is a tricky, scary puzzle. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting. And, and um, that's not me saying that I don't believe in the paranormal or anything of the sort. Otherwise, we I wouldn't mean, be doing this or... Exactly. Like, I wouldn't be who I am. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've seen shit that's like... Like, that will make you question yourself. Like, if you saw that too, you'd be like... Oh, okay. That was kind of a little questionable. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, shit, you know, I've seen things and I'm like, I'm just going to close my eyes and look over here. We're going to go get a bagel. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go. Like when I saw that figure in my bedroom that one time, and I was like, nope, not today. I'm so we're going to like. I'm going to turn around the other happen. way. <laughs> my dog starts growling. <laughs> nope, nope, come to mommy. <laughs> we're going over here. <laughs> we're going to look towards this wall over here. That's a nice dent, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it feels nice. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, La Llorona, do you believe that the myth, the creature, and the legend is real? Do you believe it's just a lesson that parents use to keep kids in check? Or do you believe it's sort yeah, of a Yeah, but what's really the lesson to put kids in check? keep them from going out and hanging out by riverbanks so they don't drown. Oh, I thought it was more like, don't piss me off or I'll drown you. It's either that too. <laughs> oh, well, not that. I was going to say, like, kids disobey and it's like, if you don't treat your family right, La Llorona will come back and exact her revenge that her husband did to her and her family because he wanted a better woman that was of the same wealthy status. And it's like, don't treat me b- bad because I'll come for you. It's like, sort of kind of that lesson too. Or a lesson in um, moving on and don't let things that you can't control. control I mean, come you. on, La Llorona. Just put on that white dress and I'll get you a new man. You don't need no man. She was a strong, independent woman. Yeah, do your thing, girl. Make him pay for child support and he can't see his damn kids. Done. Exactly. <laughs> and make those boys better than what he was. Yeah. But yeah. Do you believe in La Llorona? Yeah. I don't believe in, like, the movie that came out. Oh, no. <laughs> the Conjuring? No. <laughs> no, no, no. The, um, the other one? Yeah, where they actually made the film La La, La, La Reina. La La Reina. Whatever. La Reina. Okay, I already told you I failed Spanish class. Can you roll your R's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. La Llorona. La Llorona. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck, you're messing me up. <laughs> La Llorona. La Llorona. <laughs> oh my gosh. La Llorona. La Llorona. Um, yeah, where it was like imprinted on the daughter or whatever, and then it like follows them to the house. Like that shit, no. That's just cinema. But I believe in this one episode of. I can't remember what it was on, but. I feel like it's kind of like that where um, the kid was playing in the water banks past a certain time and he's he yeah it was a little boy sees this woman crying in the river and he goes up to try to help her and she uh, ends up taking the kid and when they try to go find the kid it's like locked up in this house thing with the ghost and she's like feeding off his energy and trying to like trying to replace the kids she lost with other kids i forgot what this tv show was that sounds but I was so like, eerie i know i was like i believe in this <laughs> <laughs> i believe that's possible it's so possible <laughs> um i would like to believe in la llorona but i haven't heard wailing at night like that before but then yeah, again i don't live in mexico or that mexico. close to like yeah. rio grande river or something of the sort um, and also, I don't hang out near river or waterways because I can't swim. So, but then again, is it really the wailing of La Llorona, whatever, or is it a banshee? Oh, Ooh. ah. Um, I don't know. Maybe it could be a fairy. Um, you know what's interesting? A lot of people. Okay, so you know barn owls. Mm-hmm. They actually relate their screech to La Llorona's scream. Oh, I was about to say, the banshee in the end of my story, remember I said... Is related to barn owls. Barn owls, yeah. Mm-hmm. They were saying that barn owls are... They make the same screeching sounds as... A banshee. A banshee. So, that's so creepy. And that goes back to our minds playing tricks on us. Thank you, Brain. Thanks, Brain. <laughs> You're not that helpful <laughs> in scary situations you make it worse i don't know what's real and what's not <laughs> anxiety is a Am bitch I here right now <laughs> i'm gonna freak over nothing <laughs> and then during a very stressful sad environment you're just like but and they're like you're heartless and i'm like i don't know how to React. deal with this right now <laughs> uh, no. i'm, I'm gonna, gonna go shut down 
We're just going to take my dog and stare at this wall and this yeah. dent. <laughs> I'm just going to stare at this hole that I created with my nail. It feels nice. <laughs> okay. So this is one story. Um, okay, I like this one because it says La Llorona in Texas. As we noted above, La Llorona doesn't limit her travels to New Mexico. Seemingly, she follows Hispanic people wherever they go, as evidenced by Pete Sanchez's story about crossing the San Bernard River Bridge in East Bernard, Texas. East Bernard is southwest of Houston in Wharton County. This old community build, built its first residence around 1850 on the east side of San Bernard River. Today the, today, the San Bernard Bridge spans the river. Several years ago, Mr. Sanchez was driving along in East Bernard with the radio blaring. As he was crossing the river bridge, he was startled as he looked to the right to see a semi-transparent woman sitting in his passenger seat. Dressed all in black, a lacy black veil covered the spirit's face. Obviously frightened, Sanchez hit the gas hard, speeding past the bridge and not looking back into the passenger seat. It wasn't until he passed the bridge that he found the courage to look again. The spirit had vanished. Mr. Sanchez readily admits that he is still freaked out today by that ghostly image. What would you do if, um, well, you're a passenger princess, but let's just say hypothetically you were driving across the bridge and that happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> bitch that's my spot <laughs> <laughs> bitch i'm sleeping there in a little bit so you need to get out uh you need to scooch a dooch because that's my spot um yeah i don't i don't know i'd be like uh, i'd stop <laughs> bitch <laughs> i'd be like that i'd be like uh this ain't uber unless you're gonna give me a lot of money <laughs> get out, out. <laughs> yeah. You got cash? <laughs> I only take cash. Mm -hmm. You don't look like you own a phone. <laughs> 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 Can't Venmo me or cash at me. Oh, oh man. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so this one's called Did I Really See La Llorona? A California version. I don't think anybody has ever heard of the city I live in. I live in the suburbs of a small valley town called Lompoc, California. Well, the story of La Llorona that I know was, know was that was that she was a prostitute, and every time she would have a child, she would take it to the creek and drown it. Before long, she was murdered by one of her customers and sentenced by God to wander the rivers and streets of the world looking for her children. La Llorona became so upset that she cried and cried, eventually drying her eyes out, leaving two black holes where her eyes once were, and her mouth grew incredibly large, resembling that of a horse. The legend continues that if she heard a child crying, she would come for them, thinking it was one of her own. When I was a child of eight children, my family would warn us that La Llorona was outside waiting. During the day, we might cry when we heard this, but as the sun started to die, we were too scared to even walk alone through the house, thinking she might have heard us and was waiting in the dark corner. One night, when I was about eight years old, I was terribly angry at my mom, and she made me sleep with her that night. However, I was so upset that I couldn't sleep, and La Llorona was the last thing on my mind. However, as I tossed and turned, I looked to the foot of the bed, and there stood a lady in a black dress with purple trim. She had two black holes where her eyes should have been and an enormous grin on her face. She had long, straight black hair that looked like it was blowing in the wind. The weird part was, I wasn't scared. I just sat up in bed staring at her for a good five minutes. I finally got tired and fell asleep when she wouldn't go away. It wasn't until the next morning that I got scared and strange things seemed to happen to me in the house ever since. This house is said to be buried over an old Indian slash Spanish cemetery. Prostitute, huh? Yeah. See, different reiterations too. of this tale. It's crazy. I've never heard of that. Yeah, no. I mean, that makes it so dark. We should do, like, um, a post where people can put uh, any other different Oh, like your version? Variation of... La yeah. Llorona. Do it on the thing. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, if you guys want question. to tell your version of La Llorona... Go to our website, go to our episode list, scroll all the way down, and you can post your thing and it will send an email to us. Just title it, My Version of La Llorona. Go to our website. Our website is deeperintothedark.com. 
just deeper into the dark.com. No, www dot or http or whatever. It's just deeper into the dark.com. And if you want, you just shoot us an email too. Deeper in the dark. So our email is deeper into the dark at gmail.com. Well, Damn. thank you for that. Of course. And I love those stories. Maybe um, someone else can have a different version that we could talk about one day and actually do listener stories too. That would be so cool. Yeah. I'm still waiting, guys. Hello. <laughs> Anyways, on to true crime with Christina. So mine also takes place in Mexico, so that's really cool. Ooh. Oh, look at us. Mexico. So Mexico. What is it? Um, Namaste uh, of a swear day. I didn't no, ask to be born Latina. <laughs> You're so ridiculous. <laughs> he always says that shit. Um, so, yeah. Let me just dive right in it. You ready? Okay. All right. Dive right in or get thrown in the river. <laughs> Drowned, bitch. Drowned. Drowned, bitch. Um, so in one of my past stories um, or episodes mm-hmm. with you, I explored what a mother's love is. And it wasn't on, you know, Mother's Day. It was just in a, yeah, a topic that I found interesting. Another um, special guest, Greg. I know. Well, and then like, y'all guys gave me shit because you were like, that should have been your Mother's Day episode. And I was like, I didn't even think about that. We didn't I give you went. shit. We just said, okay. hey, that would have been cool. Okay. You gave me highly suggested feedback. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, so today I wanted to showcase one mother's determination when it comes to her daughter. Stefan, our beautiful host over here, my, my co-host, gave me the idea for this story because I never heard of it before. This mother's search for justice began in San Fernando, Mexico. So, again, also in Mexico. Look at that. So cool. Mexico is in the house. (laughs) Represent. Um, On January 23rd, 2014, when 20-year-old Karen Alejandra Salinas Rodriguez... Rodriguez... I can't roll my R's good. It's going to be super white, guys. It's literally just Rodriguez. Okay. Rodriguez. (laughs) Daughter of Miriam Elizabeth Rodriguez Martinez was abducted by force. While Karen was driving, two trucks pulled up beside her. Armed men uh, then forced their way into her car, driving off with her. Miriam and her family knew the Zetas. Zetas? I don't know how to say that one. It's Z-E-T-A-S. Try looking at Zetas. Cartel took Karen and spent several weeks trying to bring her home. This cartel was known for kidnapping innocent people using the ransom money to fund the cartel operations. Miriam's family carried out the cartel's demands, but Karen never came home. Miriam asked if a cartel member would meet with her, and to her surprise, one member agreed. Unfortunately, he didn't know where Karen was, but offered to help find her for $2,000. Though it led nowhere, Miriam paid the fee, However, she did have something she didn't before. The cartel member's name, Sama. Ooh. Even though at this point... Huh? Sama. Sama. Even though at this point, Marion believed her daughter Karen was dead, she would not rest until she hunted down each of Karen's kidnappers. Marion started to gather clues, starting with finding Sama on Facebook. On his page, she identified a friend of his by her uniform from the ice cream store she worked at. She waited out for hours outside that ice cream shop until Sama appeared and she followed him to where he lived. Miriam didn't want to be detected so she dyed her hair red wearing an old uniform and going around the neighbors like houses asking questions under the disguise of conducting a poll. Oh wow. Which they didn't specify what kind of poll but I'm assuming it's um, for, you know, those questions for, um, uh, what kind is like it? like city stuff or like yeah, housing like, situation or something? Like um, population. Mm. Like oh, kind of like that uh, census kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. That's like what I'm thinking it was. Oh. They didn't specify it and I didn't really go into it. I mean, it would it. make sense because, yeah. I mean, what else would you answer that? Yeah. Why else would you be answering weird questions? Because a lot of the questions, I don't know if you've ever been asked them or looked them up, but they ask, like, they're all about your neighbor, your neighborhood, what type of people live around mm-hmm. you, 
um, how long have you lived in this? So sh this is like the best questions to ask to get to know that person, you mm -hmm. know, and what they do and all that. So Miriam knew she needed authorities help, but no one would um, help her until one federal police was willing to help. The police finally obtained Sama after he tried to escape arrest the first time. During interrogation, Sama gave police names of other cartel members. These members shed more light on Karen's, Karen's abduction. One of the members even agreed to show the police the ranch and where Karen had been killed. So it had been confirmed now, which of course it's been several weeks, so at this point we would already obtain the information that Karen was no longer with us if they were just kept trying to pull money mm -hmm. from her. So this cartel member was like, all right, I'll show you where she was killed. The ranch. This is what we call it, the ranch. Wow. Wait, so, they call it the ranch? Yeah. Oh, like, this is the place where we take the whatever. Rum, yeah, rum, or rum. The, there's probably, like, lots of ranches, and that was just the one she was killed at. I don't know. But they just called it the ranch in interrogation. Wow. So, um, when they went to the ranch, Miriam <sighs> went to where she not only found Karen's scarf, but the cushion from her truck and one of her femur bones. Holy shit. Miriam's search for justice for her daughter's kidnappers kidnappers became the search for her killers. Miriam, in all, would hunt down a total of 10 cartel members who played a role, a role in her daughter's kidnapping. She even sometimes pursued them on foot until the police arrived to arrest them. Although many of these members had left the cartel attempting to start over, Miriam did not care. They didn't care when they kidnapped and killed her daughter. So Miriam was like, I don't care if you're trying to start over. She's like, oh, you're trying to be better and do something for yourself? Well, sell that to my dead daughter. Yeah. Damn. So she was just like, mm, tough titties. Like, She's like, oh, go suck a dick. You're still dying or you're going to jail. Yeah. Wow. So um, Miriam never killed any of these. She just wanted to bring them to justice. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so she, she was kind of like, in my mind, when I was reading this story, Kind of like um, a bounty a hunter, bounty hunter, mm. Bell's Bond person. Like mm -hmm. ch she got them all alive, mm. and she would like hold them until police arrived. So Miriam recognized that the danger of her work, um, that she was challenging their way of life against a powerful enemy, but she did not fear death. According to a friend of Miriam's, her response to questions about if she feared that they would kill her. Miriam said, I don't care if they kill me. I died the day they killed my daughter. I want to end this. I'm going to take out the people who hurt my daughter and they can do whatever they want to me. During this pursuit, she became an activist for families whose loved ones had disappeared in Mexico. She even started an organization. Um, and in Spanish, I couldn't say it. I really did try, but this is the what it means in English. Translated version? Okay. Yeah. But holy shit, she said that in response. Mm hmm Say it again? So she said, I don't um, I don't care if they kill me. I died the day they killed my daughter. I want to end this, and I'm going to take out the people who hurt my daughter, and they can do whatever they want to me. God damn. Like, gives chills. She's like... She's like, fuck you, and I'm going to do whatever I can. I don't care if you kill me. She's like, you can kill me, you can torture me, I don't give a fuck, but I'm taking as most as much as I can with you yeah. with me. I'm taking every one of you fuckers down before I die. <laughs> so, um so mom, she started yeah. an organization um called San Fernando, because that's where they live, mm -hmm. collective for the disappeared. So, because um, you know, Karen wasn't the only one that this was happening to, because this is how the cartel was funding their operations was by kidnapping mm. and holding people for ransom but the families never got their family members back um three years later in march of 2017 29 inmates from a penitentiary oh my god penitentiary mm -hmm. dug a tunnel and they escaped from the uh jail where karen's abductors had been imprisoned oh yeah unfortunately on may 10th when Mexico celebrated Mother's Day, because, you know, um, the day of Mother's Day always changes, but it always falls on the second Sunday. Mm -hmm. Well, 
on the day of her uh, on this day May 10th it was their mother's day mm-hmm. that's where it uh, got a uh, it landed on mm-hmm. Miriam's work caught up with her Miriam who's 57 years old at the time was walking with crutches up to her front door she had recently broke her foot chasing after a suspect and as she was walking up her driveway a white Nissan that was driven by the escapees pulled up to her house Miriam was shot about a dozen times then they drove away her husband found her with her hand in her purse where she kept her pistol god damn she yeah. said bitch she was I'm like, coming I'm for you too I'm gonna try to get you guys too but they probably had like mm-hmm. AK 47s mm-hmm. or whatever and they just went boom 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 so she didn't really have like time to grab her pistol and pull it out Miriam's death enraged, enraged the people of San Fernando Mexico their governor even tweeted on Twitter that they would, wouldn't would allow her death to turn into another statistic. The government did arrest two of Miriam's killers, but the third suspect was killed in a gunfight. Miriam's murder, or sorry, Miriam's murder became the end of her work, unfortunately. Her son took over her organization, but it slowly collapsed. Regrettably, Miriam's story is not that uncommon where reports showed that about 100,000 people who have disappeared in Mexico since 2007, when they declared, uh, they started declaring war on drugs, Mm -hmm. you know, that whole thing. But when it came to Karen becoming one of those one in 100,000 people, her mother Miriam stepped into action. Though she paid for it with her life, she did find justice for her daughter after all. Wow. Yeah. So... But, like, on the way there, she was also trying to help as many other family members as she could with her organization. But it didn't um, get carried on. And so. I don't know if it was because her son just didn't put that much into it or um, he didn't have as many connections as she did. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds like this mom, this woman, she was a big activist and she really pushed for things, for change in her state. So... I don't know, but I'm really glad that you shared that with me and I was able to look it up because if I, like, if I did have my mom, I feel like she'd be that kind of mom. Mm-hmm. Like, she would do anything to protect me even after death. For sure. Wow. What a badass. I know. Like, That's going a badass out mom. with your hand on your pistol. Like, she was more gangster than these fucking assholes. Mm-hmm. She wasn't even. And a she gangster. had fucking crutches, bitch. She She's, was she was practically handicapped with her broken foot and she was still trying to get her pistol to shoot these fuckers down. God damn, that's <laughs> She's oh. gonna go pew pew. <laughs> she said She said, I don't give a fuck. I'm she's like, I'm going out. I'm gonna try and take one of you motherfuckers out. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. Wow. She actually like did what these people talk shit about. Like they're gonna go and hunt you down and da 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 She did up. more for not only her daughter, but other people mm-hmm. and finding these um, cartel, car, yeah, the cartel members than her own government did. Mm-hmm. And even um, in this article, I didn't write it down, um, but it was with the uh, all that's interesting dot com covered it and it was this big they were taking big parts of the story from the um, New York Times, and they were having there was lots of quotes from um, governor and the um, even the police officer or the federal police officer that helped her and other police officers. But the federal officer that helped the reason why he said yes, I'll help you is because he was like she came in, bam, she had all this information, she knew everything about these cartel members. She knew where to find them. She just needed help to to obtain them because she can't arrest them. Mm-hmm. She can't be like citizens arrest. Nah, nah, yeah, nah. it's uh, she and so everybody else just like, oh no. But this officer was like, um, if she this, did the, she did the heavy if this bowling. bitch can come in with these balls, I'm gonna fucking help her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he was just like enthralled with her. Go get it attitude. Yeah, her deter determination, determination and her. He was saying something like, um, I, I loved it. I was like, I love how this guy 
was talking about her. And, you know, it kind of shed a better light on... Because when I was reading it, I was like, God, fuck... Like, I already fucking hate police officers, but that's just like... was even worse. Like, none of these fuckers were helping. And this guy was just like... Let me see. What did he say? It was so funny. I mean, it wasn't funny, but it was just... I was just like, yeah. <laughs> that's just crazy. That... She actually was like, no, my daughter's death isn't going to be just another statistic. She said, I'm going to find her killers. Okay. So he said, when she pulled her files out on the table, I had never seen anything like it. The details and information gathered by this woman working all alone was just incredible. And I was like, damn. So yeah, he was just like, I had to help her. I mean, she basically did everything for you. She's like, I just need you to get these guys. <laughs> I just need you to use your little cuffs, read them his rights, and put him into jail. <laughs> I got all the evidence. I have where he's at. I know where he And shits. I love that he allowed her to Come be along. there. Yeah. Not only for the arrest, but for where Karen's body was, or her, her murder scene. Like, he allowed her to be there every step. I don't know if it's just because their government's different than ours in the United States, but you don't see that here. It's no. stay at home, don't talk to the press, don't do anything, let the police handle it. Mm -hmm. And they have too much on their fucking plate. Mm -hmm. And there's just too much for some family members where they need that closure and they're mm -hmm. not going to get it. Oh, no. Not Kinda even see like, the, them getting brought to justice. Yeah. Kind of like my last story with um, Amber... Hagerman, where mm -hmm. her mom was like, I need to see my baby girl. And the police officers were like, no, like she's in bad shape. And she's like, I, if I don't see and like she's confirm still it's my... She's technically missing to me. Yeah. If I don't confirm that's my baby girl, it's not going to be real for me. Mm -hmm. So they let her see her. She, she was like bruised and bloody and like it was so bad. And she had to like look at it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it she gave her... That. It gave her that closure. Mm -hmm. It's like y'all could just be saying something like, oh, this is her when it's not her. It's yeah. like, I need to know. I need to confirm this. Not for you guys, but for myself, too. It's like, let me have this. Yeah. Granted, I may regret it, but I need it at the same time. But to go to the site where your daughter was killed. Find her scarf. A cushion for her, her seat, because you mm -hmm. know her car. And then her femur. Mm-hmm. Her fucking leg. That's just wild. How did they know it was a femur? Because it's a femur? No, how did they know it was her femur? Oh, you can test bones. Oh, DNA, DNA. testing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was like a, she saw it. She's like, oh, I know that femur. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I know that femur. Damn, she's that badass. <laughs> My baby has bold legs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, thank you so much, Christina. I don't know why we clap after we tell a story, because... <laughs> well, it's <laughs> depressing. Mother's Day, and also, it was a good story, and a real story. Yeah. So. I mean, yours is, like, real in itself, too. I mean, these are stories that people pass down. Mm -hmm. um, from generation to generation. That's really sad that her organization collapsed. I know. So it's like, so now this cartel gets away with it again now. Yeah. Can I don't know if they're still active or not. But I'm I sure don't know. I didn't do much digging because I literally wrote it this morning. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I did some research last night. But then you know, sleepy my, time. No, my girlfriend. They wanted to go to that pizza place. No. Oh. And I had a bit too much to drink and Hello, carbs. Jiki -jiki. Um, so I had to go to sleep. <laughs> when I came back. Oh my god. I was like sitting there and I I wrote like the first two paragraphs of my story. And then I was just like, I can't. I can't keep my eyes open. <laughs> I literally was like, because you know, I write my whole thing out, right? Like, I read the whole story and then I write my own version mm -hmm. of it. And so I was like, everything was blurring together and I was like, okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. Wait, what did I just write? God, it's not did English. Did I repeat myself? This isn't even Spanish. What is this? Oh, Pink Latin. <laughs> Pink Latin. No. Ude, uye, ese, oe. Oe, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, thank you so much for your story, Christina. That was 
awesome. Thank you for covering it because I did suggest it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, wow. That's every time I hear that story, it's just amazing. I originally heard it on uh, another podcast, uh, and that's why we drink, of course. Christine, yeah, I haven't it. seen all of their episodes, but out of all the podcasts that I listen to that has to do with paranormal, they are my favorite. But I don't know why. Just lately, I've been in a the viral podcast. Kind of funk. Like yeah, so that. I've been binge watching them rather. On, either when I'm driving to work from or to work, um, sh- you know, shitting, eating, <laughs> <laughs> sleeping. I fell asleep on one of their um, videos. Episodes. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to re- re-listen to it. <laughs> but yeah, I've just been like, her, <laughs> eat, sleep, and viral shitting podcast. with viral podcasts. <laughs> eat, sleep, viral podcasts. Um, Hey, Chelsea Lynn, if you hear this, we love you, Paige. We love you, too. And Brett and Maggie and Beth and... <laughs> and everyone. And uh, Paige, if you want, just let me know how's it going, and I can fill in for you so you can take it off. Mm-hmm. Same with you, Chelsea. No, they have those... Um, they have those paper... The paper cutout. <laughs> oh yeah, my bad. Never mind. We'll just voice you. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, we'll do voiceovers. Or how does your oh yeah? Oh yeah. Yeah. So clear, there you go. <laughs> like Christina's got you covered, guys. She loves you. And Paige just always says like, "Lick my booty." <laughs> lick, lick my booty. You know, lick, lick my, my ass. You know, lick my ball. <laughs> 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 or she always goes, "I can't do the demon voice." She does. Oh, how does it go? Mm, I'm fucking you. <laughs> Who's that? Mm. I can only you. do. Ch- Ch- I can only do Chelsea's Todd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's fucking me? It's me. It's me, Todd. It's me. <laughs> yeah. It's me, Todd. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Get underneath, bitch. <laughs> mm. <laughs> fucking bitch. <page. laughs> You just have to, like, stop it right there. After that, we can't carry your show. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where to go after that. <laughs> People call in, and they answer those damn questions. Ugh. Oh, man. Well, thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. We yes, hope happy you Mother's Day. Have a lovely day. If your mother's not here, um, sorry. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> if not, um, if you're a mother... Happy Mother's Day. I Hope you have a wonderful mother. day. I mean, you're a mother to a puppy, a bunny, two parakeets, and um, an RV. <laughs> um, yeah, happy Mother's Day. Don't have too much fun. Um, don't be too mad if your husband forgets because he probably forgets his own stuff. I mean, it's so commercialized that it's Let's be on honest. every the fucking episode. Like, <laughs> like Every YouTube, every radio, every commercial is just oh, Mother's Day. Get your wife this. Get your mom this. Like every five fucking seconds. And True. I'm like, Jesus. I can understand your anger now that I think about it. <laughs> but then again, I don't listen to the radio. I don't okay. really watch YouTube anymore, and I don't watch TV. What do you do all day? I sleep, work. and then I go to work, and then I come home, and then I either play games, or I'm editing the podcast, or I'm looking up stuff to write about on the podcast, or Let I'm dealing with cats. <sighs> yeah. Oh my God. Anyways, well, thank you so much, guys. Happy Mother's Day. Do you want to say anything else, Christina? Um, no, just happy Mother's Day. And what I was going to say was, for people who are, um, you know... They don't have their mothers in their lives. Just spend today remembering them if you can. I don't really have that many much like memories. A lot of mine come from home videos. Um, but I always bring flowers to my mom. So I'll be doing that probably to s- Saturday after work, the day before Mother's Day. So I'll be That's doing so that. Sweet. And her favorite flowers were carnations. So. Oh my gosh! Red though, but red carnations. Yeah, you know, because well, that's what that girl wanted. Um, and uh, Jarvis, she wanted 
a white carnation badge. Mm. So like a little white flower on your shirt. Um, what a clinky dink. I know. But yeah, my mom, she liked carnations. My mom is very typical Mexican mom. She likes red roses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She deserves them. <laughs> As she should. I mean, she's got massive rose bush plants that she got from her sister. Yeah, my grandma has rose bush plants, but I don't think that's her favorite flower. I'm going to have to ask her. I can't remember. I know it's, I don't think it's roses, but that bitch has a green thumb, so she has so many damn plants. <laughs> oh, man. Do you have a favorite flower? Uh, Black. No. Um, Yes, I do. Fuck. Well, how about we do a post on Facebook and stuff? Yeah, if I figure it out and show it, I'll post my favorite flower down below. I mean, obviously I like roses too, black roses and whatnot, but like, I don't think those are my favorite. I really like chrysanthemums. Okay. But I don't think those are my favorite. They're just pretty? They're just pretty, and I like their healing properties. Mm. You know me, I'm all about that. All about that heal. About that healing. herbal life. So yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to. You didn't even ask me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Rewind. Hey, Christina, what is your favorite flower? As I already know, but continue. What's my favorite flower? Um, isn't your flower? Um, I know it. Don't say it. <laughs> I want to say it like a thousand times. Yeah, you did. You said like a lot, and it's like right there. I gotta Google the name of it. Oh my gosh. Starts with an L. Lilies? Yeah. I was going to say lilies, but I, for some reason my brain kept saying I wanted to say like um, baby's breasts. I don't know why. Oh, I like forget me nots. That. Yeah. That's the one. They're not my favorite, nots. but like if someone gave it to me when I'm sad, I'll be happy. Forget me not. But it I like lilies. So similar to baby's breath. I mean, yeah. they're small little flowers. Yeah. But I love lilies. Um, valley lilies are my favorite because they're so. <gasps> oh yeah, that's the one I liked. You said valley lilies. Mm -hmm. You like valley lilies? Hold on. Continue. That's what you're saying. Yeah, they're wild. And then of course I like the the typical white lily. I like the cup lily, like all lilies, pretty much. And then if not that, then I'm a succulent bitch. So any and all succulents, cacti. They're my thing. Okay. So I do have one that's like grown on me very recently. It brought up. It's actually called the moonflower. Moonflower? What does it look like? It looks like that. Why is it called that when it's white with yellow in the middle? I would call it Because it sun. blooms at night. Oh. Interesting. And it has a very soft and sweet scent. What's the name of that plant that smells like death? And only blossoms once a year. Oh, um... That ugly ass thing. I know, it looks like a fucking alien. But when it blooms, it's like pretty. So pretty. Uh, but it smells like corpse. I think it's called, it called corpse, corpse flower? flower. Yeah, it's called corpse flower. Or titan arum. Arum. It looks like a big dick with like a coochie. Yeah, yeah. Like, All you gotta say it. was that. Yep. I want to kind of go see that in person. I do too, but also the smell, the stank. There's another flower that mask. smells like, um, it looks like an alien fly. The alien fly, the fly not, trap? Not the Venus fly trap. It's another one. It's like a, it's called Rafflesia guinness. It's only found in the, um, Amazon. Let me see. It attracts flies. Oh, that sounds beetles. familiar. Ew, that looks ugly. As, it looks like a gaping vagina hole. Or <laughs> like booty, hole. booty hole. Booty hole. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like when it blooms, it releases the scent that attracts flies to get in its like syrupy juices. And then ew, they rot into I it. I hate the smell of those fly traps that the flies love it, but it smells like death. Well, thank you guys. Okay, well, Hope thanks. you have a good day. Happy Mother's Day. Get railed. <laughs> get railed, Dutch. <laughs> Mothers deserve railings, too. Mothers, <laughs> you get that good good. Ew. Do you That's think so your gross. parents still have sex? Oh, I know they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know my grandparents that they sleep on opposite ends of the house. <laughs> so do mine. <laughs> it must be oh, an yeah. old person Doesn't thing. Does your dad live in your room now? Yeah, he lives in my old room now. <laughs> Anyways, guys, you have a good night. 
night. Happy Mother... Happy... Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, it is happy. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Get real. Get real. Love you. Bye. Bye. I don't love you. Oh, no. That's me. <laughs>